Hello, welcome to my journey to the media world. My name is Jude Aston and I'm here to bring you a match preview of Aston Villa versus Manchester City on Sunday. Today I'm joined by Ray from City Fan TV. I'm here. First of all, Ray, um, if you want to tell the viewers out there why they should go over and subscribe to your channel, the link will be wow. in the description. Thanks very much, Jude. Uh, yeah, just pop over to our channel, have a look. Um, it's obviously it's a, it's a Man City uh, fan channel, City Fan TV. Uh, primarily, we talk about Man City, but we have fans from other um, clubs that go on. We do live streams, probably uh, at least four or five um, evenings a week. Um, every just about every evening uh, on match days as well. Um, so we, we do get a whole cross section of fans. As I said, mostly Man City, but we get a few Liverpool fans, a few fans from down in uh, London and around the country, uh, they get involved as well. And it's meant to be, you know, no, no big, generally no big dramas, um, civil, um, fun fun chat about football, as I said, with the, with the Man City slant. And it's not just a live stream, so like we're doing now, um, previews of games, uh, financial information about, mostly about Man City, and sometimes just general uh, stuff on uh, FFP, uh, financial fair play, VAR, uh, and other things. Well, we'll get, we we'll try and get uh, experts in uh, as best we can to contribute to those uh, videos. Yeah, that sounds great. Um, like I say, link will be in the description. Um, Cheers. So, if we're going to talk about Manchester City, first of all, on a whole as a season, um, what are your thoughts on the season so far? Obviously, you're sitting third in the league. I'm um, yeah. imagining that's not how you'd have thought the season would have gone. I don't know. What's your view? view? Yeah, I mean, I thought we'd have done a little bit better, uh, to be honest. Uh, we've lost, was it five games in the league, uh, which is a, is disappointing. And, and it's some of the teams we've lost to. I mean, we lost to, uh, to your uh, localish rivals in Wolves. We lost them home and away. And that's that's disappointing, even though they're a decent side. Uh, but losing five games after losing, was it four all last season? Only a few this season before. It's a, it's a disappointing um, first few months, but um, I, like I'm old enough to remember the the bad times. You know when we were in the third tier of um, in, uh, English football and and all the struggles from you know not winning any any trophy from 1976 till 2011, 35 years. It's a very long time. So um, I don't try and you know get arrogant and, and and think we deserve to win something just because we've got. You know, owners who pumped a fair bit of money, and we got a good manager, good team. You know, everything has to be earned, and we don't deserve anything just because we've we've been going for a long time and we've had a good run. So, although it's been a for us relatively a tough uh, for six, um, half of the season, it's still decent. I mean, look at it. We, as yourselves are, as Villa are, we're in the semi-finals of the Carabao Cup, one step away from Wembley. We're still in the FA Cup. We're in, through to the next round of the Champions League. We're third in the league. The league's gone. The league was gone a long time ago. Um, and in any other season, it'll still be a decent season. If Liverpool weren't such a phenomenal force at the moment, we'd still be in with a shout of uh, challenging for the title. So, as I said, comparing it to the last couple of seasons, which were absolutely out of this world, and we, we did stuff that no one else has ever done, this is a bit of a, a, a drop in our level. But... We're still a good side, and you know we still got a lot of football to play, a lot of um, competitions uh, still to uh, to go for, titles to win, you know, cups to win. So uh, it, it's good. It's you know, on average, it's been a decent uh, season so far. Yeah, this is just my view, and I don't know what you think about this, but I feel that your season could have you know gone a whole lot better if em Emery Laporte wasn't injured. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely, mate. Absolutely. Look, he would have done two things. He would have helped our defence. That's the first thing. And it would have also given us an opportunity for our best holder midfield, you know, to play in midfield, which is his position. Um, and it's, it's a shame that we're in the position where we've lost our best centre-back and we've lost our best defensive midfielder because he's had to cover for him. I'm not sure how much difference it would have made if we'd had the poor... Maybe we would have won a couple more games. We'd be a bit closer to Liverpool. But Liverpool, if they win their game in hand, are 17 points clear. So, yes, if we won a couple of games that we'd lost, we'd still be 10 or 11 points behind Liverpool. So we'd still be miles behind. Um, but it'd be great when he comes back at the end of the month. Yeah. And do you feel there's 
at times there's been a little bit of stubbornness from Pep in terms of changing things around? Um, a lot of fans have uh, felt that, you know, uh, his, um, yeah, you can call it stubbornness uh, or desire to play Fernandinho at centre-back and that's it. When you, we were, I was thinking from early on in the season that Rodri, even though he looks like he's going to be a very, very good player, um, he's only, what, 22, 23 years old. Uh, he needs more time to get used to Pep and the system and English football. And uh, sometimes I, I feel he's a bit slow in coming back and uh, making the tackle and deciding when you know to take a card or, or, or not. I think he's getting better at that. But the stubbornness and and, and, and persistence with Fernandinho at centre back, and I don't think Pep's going to change now. Uh, he's gone too far down into the season with that, has held us back in midfield. Um, but as we get players coming back, you know, almost everybody's fit now. There's only Laporte and. Um, Leroy Sane, who are not back with the with the boys. Um, I think as we get players back, we'll get better and better. Yeah, and if we move on to the game now, obviously on Sunday, yeah. do you feel this is a great opportunity to come to Villa Park and reduce that gap? Although there's still a massive gap, but to reduce that gap a little more. Um, well, I don't think we're going to reduce the gap the way Liverpool are playing. I expect them to, to to beat Spurs. You can't see them losing. You know, forget about drawing. You can't see them losing at the moment. I'm not really worried about that gap between us and Liverpool because, um, you know, all we can do at City is just keep winning our games, and I think we've got to do that because we'd rather finish second than third. Yeah. Um, just just because it makes, uh, or even fourth. I mean, we don't want to drop down to fourth. You know, but. In terms of money, it makes a difference money-wise, uh, finishing second. In terms of Premier League money, uh, the the, for the money you win for each position and Champions League money next season, where if you finish second, you get a lot more money than if you finish fourth uh, as your initial payment. Um, so for the club, that, make, that makes a difference. And also, you want to keep winning games. You want to get back onto a run. Uh, it's like Liverpool have done this season with all these victories. And they they go out and now they're so far clear that they're not even looking at anybody else. They know they're going to win it, and that takes a lot of pressure off them. When we won um, the league a couple of years back, when we got 100 points, it was very early in that season. You felt that City were going to win you know, the title by Christmas, New Year's. You thought it was almost over, and it took a lot of pressure off the team. And then they just strolled to the title and I probably won games at, at even more at a canter, and it puts pressure on the opposition as well. So I think. A lot of things are, are important and for us to keep winning. You know, we've got Real Madrid in the Champions League coming up. We want to keep that uh, momentum, that uh, motivation, that confidence going as new players come back, as we play tons of games. There's, there's now better than winning games. Yeah, and you mentioned earlier about you feel you're a little bit limited in midfield um, without Emery Laporte. Well, um, the thing was, Emery Laporte, Emery Laporte because we uh, he was out, Fernandinho, who's the still one of the best holding midfielders in the country, he has, he's had to play in defence. And I think that early in the season has caused, caused us some problems because it meant that our defence was not as protected as it was before. And I think teams um, attacked our defence. Uh, uh, they had more opportunities. And our defence is not... Uh, our defenders are not uh, defenders who are focused on defending. Their principal role seems to be in an attacking sense, controlling the ball, starting and launching the um, the attacks, they're not brilliant defenders per se. Um, and you probably got better, some better defenders than us. Leicester have, who are focused on just defending. Our guys are, are not, you know, we've had a game this season against Palace where we had Rodri and Fernandinho at centre back, and they're not centre backs; they're defensive midfielders. But they were played there because they could they could launch the attack, and Palace are not going to. Uh, really put pressure on your defence. They'll have one man up front. So, uh, so Pep did that. Um, but that was causing our defence to be under pressure. But I think Pep's tried different tactics now. You've seen him play with three at the back. You've seen the game against uh, United where, at, actually, if you, you know, I've seen some of the stills for that. We had two at the back. We were playing a 2-3-2-3 two, three, two, three system at times. So Pep's trying new systems, the, you know, the, the four at the back, um, he's, he's, he's started to move away from. It's different tactics, and it actually helps us against teams, um, I mean, against United. They had no idea what was going on, and they, don't, they beat us a month ago at our place yeah. quite comfortably. 
and here at, at Old Trafford, they had no idea what's going on. So I think the, the tactics from Pep and changing it around, everybody's confused. You know, the fans, we have no idea when he puts out a team sheet what is what that like, you know, how is yeah. that formation is going to be like. So if we've got no idea, there's no chance that uh, the opposition have got a clue either. Yeah, well, we've been a bit like that this season. Um, Smith has, you know, resulted to play in a four-three-three for majority of the season, and you can yeah. just tell it hasn't hasn't worked out. Um, and we've been hammered with injuries too. In terms of the squad, you people say you played a weakened squad against Manchester United. It's still crazy to think that a weakened squad with the quality you've got yeah. in your side. Um, do you imagine to play the likes of Aguero um, against? Well, what team do you think you're going to play against? It, it, it's hard to it's hard to guess. You know, it is. It's getting harder and harder to uh, uh, to double guess Pep um, because you got got no idea. I mean, we've seen Cancelo uh, come into play. Um, he had a couple of games. Walker was rested. I've got no idea. The only constant yeah. seems to be Fernandinho in defence. Um, we'll get KDB in midfield. Um, he'll play. Bernardo. will I can't see him not playing. And Sterling, these are the constants. And Edison in goal. So the other positions, it's kind of, you know, uh, it could be a right back, could be Walker, could be Cancelo. Left back, we've got a choice of three. Uh, Zinchenko, Angelino and Mendy. I don't think Mendy will play. I don't think he's fit enough to play two games uh, in such a short space of time. Uh, midfield, we could see David Silva playing. Rodri, KDB, David Silva, and up front, I expect either Aguero or uh, Gabriel Jesus to come back and possibly uh, Sterling or Mares to be rested. We, I can't see Sterling. Sterling's, is, uh, Sterling's form has dropped off in the last couple of months. Maybe he's played too many games um, yeah. and he's a bit wasteful in front of goal again, which at the start of the season he wasn't. He was very, very good. He was red hot and he, he's, he's fallen off a little bit. Um, so... I think there'll be some. There will be some changes, and this, as, as I said, as the squad has got more and more players fitter, then we've got options. We've got Phil Foden who can uh, play. Garcia can play at centre back. We've just got a lot of options now, which is which actually is really good because we're playing a, a game every three or four days. Yeah. Um, how important is KDB to your midfield and the team as a whole? It's a funny one. Uh, last season, KDB hardly played at all, and we got ninety-eight points and won the league. And uh, Pep said, you know, KDB will take us to another, basically take us to another level. We'll be a better team this season. And it's funny that we, I think we are. We, 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 you'd rather have KDB in your side than not, but we're not getting the results. But he, look, he's, he's probably right now, I think, the best midfielder or the best player in the Premier League. I think it's very hard for anybody to challenge him. Um, there's one or two, you know, because Man is on a good run of form. But KDB's crucial to the way we play because even I think at the start of the season I don't think he played very well but he was still creating chances and getting assists and scoring the odd goal so even a KDB not on the best of form is still a very dangerous player uh, when he's on form uh, he's so destructive in setting up goals scoring goals and, and driving the team forward so right now I think he's crucial to the team and he's one of the uh, crucial elements and he's he's basically undroppable at the moment yeah. you mentioned that you're a bit unsure on with Pep with what team he's going to play yeah. um, I'm going to go ahead and um, predict Villa's lineup. Um, ok and in goal I'm going to go with Nyland um, Tom Heaton obviously out injured uh, like I yeah. say Hammond with injuries we've got, uh, so in goal Nyland I think Smith will go for a 3-4-3 three, three. Um, it's worked really well he played it in the cup yesterday um, and that's worked over the last couple of games really well against Burnley. Um, so at left back, I'm going to go target. He's got a bit more of an attacking option. I just think that Taylor's been played a, two games in a row. Yeah. I just think he'll opt for more of an attacking option. Uh, back three of Mings, who's been exceptional. Um, House and Konza. Right back, Gilbert, again, more of an attacking option. Um, Centre mids of Douglas DeWeese, who I'm sure you, yeah. you'll know about. Um, I hear there's a buyback clause. In that. Definitely. Um, you take him back? Um, I'm not sure yet. Um, I think b partly because Fernandinho is going to stay another season. Um, I think it's probably if you if Villa stay up, I think it's better off Douglas Sweet Luis stays another season at Villa. He's getting first team uh, games. He's playing probably most of your games now. It's an important part to your side. Um, I'd leave him at Villa if you stay up. 
and uh, maybe after next season when Fernandinho probably will leave us um, then get him back if if he's done another good season yeah um, yeah so Douglas Luiz in the centre mid alongside with Conor Horahan um, left wing of Grealish obviously our star man this season everything goes through Grealish and I'm sure City will uh, have him. every player <laughs> around him <laughs> they'll be kicking him don't worry <laughs> <laughs> Um, he's used to it. Uh, this is where we get into a bit of a muddle. At centre forward, we're going to play. Uh, I'm predicting we're going to play Al Ghazi. Um, we've got no striker, like I say. Wesley's yeah. out for the season. I don't think we will sign a striker. We're rumoured with a load of strikers. You know, the January transfer window's like. You might you might try and get someone on loan. I think that's yeah. a, a good option to get someone on a six month loan. Yeah, I, yeah, not. Yeah, I think we'll definitely sign a striker. I just don't think we'll get it in time for. Yeah. Sunday. Yeah. Um, and then right wing, I'll go Trezeguet. So I mentioned there the lack of striker options. Do you feel that's something Man City's mm-hmm. defence can deal with? Or look, if you look, this, look what Pep did. We played with no striker against United. We had four guys floating around, um, and United couldn't cope. Um, so they had no one to mark. And you, you, you see situations where they had their three or four men at the back just on their own. We'd have two or three men between their defenders in midfield playing between the lines. And United uh, couldn't cope when um, the balls were passed to them and they were ch- uh, charging through on their defenders. Um, so why can't you do the same? Why can't you play with no recognised striker? And yeah. it's the s- same thing for City. You know, what, what I've always said for the last couple of seasons is teams shouldn't uh, respect us too much. Teams that respect City and just focus on defending, generally, in the last two seasons, have struggled. And they've got beat. Um, yeah. You know, if you want to get something from City, you have to give it a go. If you're going to play with one guy up front, generally, we will break you down. And we'll score a, a couple of goals, and mm-hmm. one guy will be isolated, and you'll get an out from it. I think teams have to be more adventurous. Have at least two uh, fast players. I think it's pace is what what uh, what you need to get behind our defence. Fernandinho's 34. If Eric Garcia plays, he's not the quickest. Uh, Otamendi, certainly not the quickest. John Stones, uh, yeah, he's got a few uh, uh, errors a game in him. Yeah. So, if you play with pace, I would, you know, play fast players, um, fast feet, um, willing to run and pressurise. Because no, no defender likes to be put under pressure. And if you do pressers, you've got to press us with three or four, even five players. You've got to take a risk. Uh, if yeah. you're pressing us with two or three. You're going to struggle because we've got so many options, and we're used to beating presses. Um, so I'd, I'd worry if, if it's always pace and height that worries me. Um, you mentioned, you know, about giving teams too much respect, and I feel like we've we've done, we've been a victim of that over the past half a season because we played really well against top six yeah. sides, and you know, come unlucky not to come away with anything. So I feel like we kind of showed it a little bit against Manchester United. Um, so if we, like you say, if we go out all attacking and we've got it to pace in terms of Grealish um, and Al Ghazi, then I think you know we can cause City problems. And with your defence, uh, Emirates report is going to be back, yeah. Emirates report won't be back till the end of the month. So he's only he only started training with the lads last week. So he was uh, Thursday and Friday he did ten or fifteen minutes with the lads, but th- he wouldn't have been involved, I don't think, in heavy training. You know, in, in proper rough and tumble training. He'd have been doing light stuff, passing the ball around, and that's it. That's all we've seen. This week, he, he might step up to doing a bit more, but he won't be properly fit, I reckon, for a, a couple of weeks. Uh, he won't be ready for Premier League action until, um, towards the end of the, the month. Oh, OK, so, yeah, like I say, with your defence, hopefully we can look to cause you problems. Going to look at wrapping up the yeah. episode now finally can we get a score prediction from you um everybody seems to score against city these days um i mean even united did so uh, i think we've kept off the top of my head only two clean sheets in about 15 games um one of them was against you guys up at our place i reckon you got a chance to score Grealish is in good form um i'm gonna go 3-1 to city okay i'm going to go with i think we'll score like you say uh, i'm gonna go 2-1 to see mm-hmm. to score for us and Kevin De Bruyne to score and Aguero if he starts 
Yeah, well, we, we, no one knows if he's going to start. <laughs> yeah, I know, that's what I've been. That's, thank you so much, Ray, for coming on to the channel. No worries. Like I say, guys, the link will be in the description. Uh, leave your thoughts down below, both City fans and Villa fans, on the game and your score predictions. But until next time, goodbye. Up the Villa. If you enjoyed that video, why not watch another? Click here to watch it in full. Also, subscribe. Subscribe if you're new, so you can follow my journey into the media world.